welcome to another challenge match between the professionals and the patrons. I love these. The stakes are so high for all concerned. The crack team of world-class pros are under pressure to live up to expectations generated by the form book. And the team of Patreon supporters are bravely laying themselves open to public scrutiny whilst playing against such fierce opposition. The professionals are Sally Brock, Peter Crouch, Nick Sandquist, and Stefano Tomasini, all veterans of the international circuit and multiple prize winners. And their plucky opponents are Bridget Rampton, Rajas Shuri, Chip Morgan, and Maggie Nottenveld. On with the match. Honestly, I can't believe it. What on earth am I going to do here? I've got eight of these little spades. Hmm. We're all non-vulnerable. I'm the first to bid. If I preempt here, it's way more likely I'm preempting the opponents than preempting my partner. But still, I just feel really nervous. My spade suit quality is just rubbish. But, I mean, they could easily have slam on here. I have to do something. I don't feel that I can pass with this hand. Feels to me like I need to preempt. It's either three or four for me. I can't wait to see what the professionals do. Four just seems too scary. They could penalise me. I could go down so many tracks. I think I'm just going to bid three. So North on my right has opened three spades. I have 21 points and uh, the spades fairly well guarded. I think it's a natural free no trump over call. I may have a point or two more than I might have had. But most of it is in the opponent's suit, so I don't think there's any reason to go mad. So I'm on lead to three no trumps. I don't have that terrible dilemma of whether to lead my partner's suit into the um, no trump hand, because I obviously don't have any spades. Um, I think in this situation, it's best to lead my fourth highest of my longest suit and see what dummy has to offer. I'm getting a diamond lead and a very pleasant dummy in three no trumps. Nor for my right doesn't seem to have very good spades. I wonder if she's got eight of them to compensate. That's a possibility. Diamonds, I would guess, are probably six three, maybe seven two. And the question is how I should attack the club suit. Well, I think it's fair to say that South on my left is favorite to have longer and stronger clubs. So I'm going to elect to win in hand and start with the queen of clubs and see what happens. I need to cover the queen of clubs to force a declarer onto the table so he leads back through towards my jack. That seems to have worked out well, and now I will only lose a club trick and take 12 tricks. There's no point in holding up the jack here because he'll continue to play clubs until I take my jack, and he's got the king of diamonds entry on the table anyway. Nothing makes Nick happier than playing in three no trumps, and that one presented him with no problems at all. Let's see if the patrons team have such an easy ride at the other table. Okay, so first board, I'm playing my first ever board with Stefano, a very nice guy. And we're playing against Raj and Chip. I've got an unusual hand, I mean, 8 one four zero. I like to bid a lot with these sort of hands. Um, and if I was at favourable vulnerability, I'd certainly open four spades. But it, love all, white, I think probably only three spades because I don't have a lot of tricks. And if I open four spades, I'm probably going to end up a lot of the time playing four spades doubled. And the Stiff King is really a defensive card. So it looks very much like three spades to me. Um, some might open four, but not for me. Okay, so Peter comes in and smacks us with a three spade bid right off the top. Uh, I have 21 points. Um, Solid spade stoppers. I think I'm just going to bid three no Trump. We do not have a spade to lead a partner. So it seems like our biggest upside is to try to set up our five card suit, hoping to find something, partner with something like ace one, king queen one, even maybe four low, something that will. Uh, 
to help us establish this. So it doesn't look very promising as we have a seven counting. The spades are all working for the clearer, probably finessable from dummy, but let's see what happens. Let's start with the dummy. All right, so they've led the four of diamonds. It looks like I have uh, two tricks in diamonds, one in clubs, three, uh, another in hearts, four and four top tricks in spades for eight. I just need to build one more. And the obvious place to do that is in the club suit. All right, dummy comes down. This is a pretty strong dummy, but gives us a margin glimpse, marginal glimpse of hope because uh, the clever will generally have around a 17 count at least for this Trino Trump overcall. Maybe sometimes a good 16. So if you put them with 17 plus 9 from dummy, that's 26. We hold 7. So uh, that gives partner around the 6 count. Spades probably doesn't have much future. We maybe hit something in diamonds. We have something in clubs to stop the Clara's long suit. And maybe we can find partner with something in hearts as well, as we're sitting over the Clara. So uh, partner is probably has a spade on her. So our best chance is probably to hope partner has four low diamonds and something in, in spades and the jack of hearts. The Clara doesn't have many clubs or gets his clubs wrong. We might have a chance. Let's see. So let's see how it develops. So diamond eight, nine, ace. This is very promising. So we know partner has a 10 of diamonds. Could be 10, nine to four. Could be 10, nine, double to the 10, nine to three. The dream is a 10, nine to four. The clever also probably has five spades. His partner usually has seven. So we're dreaming for this ace, queen, double, ten diamond in the, in, uh, in the Clara's hand. Let's see what he plays next. The Nine of Clubs comes around. It's definitely wrong for us to cover. Partner could have stiff queen. The Clara could go wrong playing club to the ace, playing nine from queen nine two. They should start with the queen from that probably, but they could be starting with the nine. So let's play low and hope the Clara goes wrong where partner has the queen of clubs. Oh. Yeah, well, Peter shows out in clubs, and that is a disaster. Now they can break open the diamond suit. And, um, yeah, well, this is why sometimes it makes sense to think a little longer before playing the playing the first trick. Mm, partner has shown out. So the clever has um, done the wrong thing here. Now it might be tricky for the player to set up these clubs, as we now have two club stops, which we weren't entitled to to begin with. This is looking promising. Well, I think now my only hope is to try and see if I can build a second trick in hearts um, while only losing the lead once, which is not going to be easy. Um, but it's not impossible. There are uh, layouts in which that would work. I need to pick up a king queen doubleton or a king ten doubleton or a queen ten doubleton or something like that, and then 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 it might still be all right. Uh, let me lead a low heart. King from partner. That's looking awfully like an awfully a lot like a stiff king. Could he be jumping from king one with for what benefit to not get thrown in later? Maybe. Maybe King Jack tight. The Clara wouldn't really be playing a heart in that case. Why did the Clara not play a club? A bit confusing, but let's see what happens. So partner now plays the two of spades. And generally that should be the remain the remainder count. Me and Peter were not regular partners, so I am not sure if that's what we were when a player now. So some people play original count, people standard count, because attitude was given already from the eight of spades. So we're trying to build the player's hand. Now it looks like they have five spades. We know they have three clubs. Do they have four hearts? They can't have four hearts because then they would have only one diamond. And we know they have the, the queen of diamonds. So maybe the player is four, four, three, four, four, two, three. 
ace king to four spades, ace jack to four hearts, ace queen of diamonds, and queen nine to three clubs to begin with. If that's his hand, he's going down, no? So I think now we kind of confirm the clever shape. So actually, the partner has opened with eight low spades. So the clever is looks like ace king jack to four, um, ace jack to four, ace queen tight, and queen nine one club. Since they went wrong in clubs, now we have a lot of tricks. We can just now clear the diamonds, and in the run of our diamonds, the clever might even get pieced. Let's see. Now we need to cash our diamonds. The clearer has all these good spades, but he has no access to them. He's the clearer is squeezed. On three rounds of diamonds, the clearer is going to have to make three pitches. If he pitches three spades, I can just play a heart to his jack to play club to me. If he pitches a club, my clubs are good. If he pitches a heart, my heart is good. So the clearer is now squeezed. Not something you see every day, but let's cash our diamonds. Declare okay, first throw a club. So now my king jack of clubs is good. So I'll just have to give him a heart in the end. And just as playing three no trumps is Nick's favorite thing, Stefano is well known for his love of squeeze plays. I've lost count of the number of times I've heard him utter the words, You are squeezed, my friend. He's normally declaring rather than defending when it happens, but he'll find every opportunity. My sympathies are firmly with Rajath on the play of the club suit. We've all done these things, and the pressure here on this first board of the match is a lot. That result means a 12-imp swing to the pros, so a good start to the match for them. Board 2 was played in three no trumps at both tables, with both declarers taking a very straightforward 11 tricks, so we won't bother showing you that one. Let's move on to board 3. I don't quite have enough to open two no trumps, so I'm going to settle with my better minor one club. Okay, so Sally has opened a club second in hand vulnerable, which could be short, I believe. Um, I'm fairly certain, although we didn't have much system discussion, I'm fairly certain that I could jump to two hearts, showing a weak hand with six hearts. The question is, am I too weak even for that? I think I'm not going to encourage partner too much. She seems to have a good hand, so I'm going to let the club go and see what happens. It's gone past past to me, and I suspect that because I don't have many points, my partner probably has clubs and some points. I feel it's important for me to show my five card major, so I bid one spade. Choice here between doubling a spade for takeout and bidding one no trump, uh, but there's no real reason we should have any sort of fit. So I think I'll describe my hand as eighteen to nineteen balanced and bid one no trump. My partner is a passed hand and has overcalled one spade in the pass out set. If Sally hadn't just come in showing that she had a huge balanced hand, sort of 18, 19 points with at least one spade stop, then I would have been really excited here. I was busy thinking about how to show my partner a good raise in spades. But Sally's just gone and announced to the table that she's got half the pack in her hand. So suddenly it looks way less likely that there's a hope of game in spades. It seems to me that it's much more likely now to be a part score game. I'm placing Maggie with about eight points. I don't know where all the hearts are. She's probably got something in hearts. It feels horribly wimpy. I feel embarrassed of myself to even bid this, but I'm just going to bid two spades and hope that it's a part score game and that we just buy the contract in two spades, which should be an easy make for Maggie. Okay, now Sally has bid one new Trump, showing in the range of 18, 19 points. And my right hand opponent supports to two spades. Now, because I didn't bid on the first round, I feel I can easily bid three hearts without overstating my hand. If I had a slightly better hand, Sally knows I could have jumped to two hearts over one club. I think three hearts should be fine. Well, my partner supported spades, clearly has some points. Sally's shown 18 to 19 on my left, and Nick has come in with a three heart bid, 
clearly not having many points because he didn't bid in the first um, instance. But I think I've shown my hand now, so I'm going to pass. Well, it's close, I think, whether to bid four hearts or not. It looks like the ace is going to be right and there should be no heart losers. And it just depends if partner, if partner's short in diamonds, it might be quite good. But on balance, if partner couldn't respond, um, respond, then I'm going to pass past three hearts. Oh, blast. Okay, so Nick's come in and bid three hearts. What does this mean? I would have thought that if Nick had six or seven hearts and were weak, he would have just jumped to two hearts or three hearts straight away after Sally's one club bid. So, I mean, perhaps he's exceedingly weak, like zero points. It's come back round to me. I'm definitely competing now. I feel like I should have probably done this already. Now it's a bit different because they bid three spades. So even if I go down in four hearts, if they were making three spades, it's still a decent board. I hate bidding like this, but there are chances that four hearts might make. So I think I'm really going to bid it. I don't, hope they don't double. Okay, this auction virtually screams for a penalty double. I think if neither of the opponents double me, I might do it myself. Tactically, it might have been better if Sally had taken a punt at four hearts before they pushed us up with three spades. And my hand is going to be a disappointment. I got no shortness and the jack of spades is a silly card. Oh no, Sally has bid four hearts. This just doesn't feel right. I know Sally's got half the pack. Nick made no effort at all to bid the first time round, so I'm placing him with nothing. Uh, they're just not going to make four hearts. They're vulnerable. We're not vulnerable. We just have to give them the smash. Okay, Bridget's doubled four hearts. I'm feeling nervous about that, but I need to trust my partner, so I'm going to pass. Right, I'm winning my ace here. Now let's just see if I can get a little rough in here with my three of hearts. So I'm going to start with the king of diamonds. Looks like Maggie likes that. Let's cross over to her ace, fingers crossed. And now for my rough. I'll chuck him back in now with a spade and let him do the rest of the damage himself. I think we'll be happy with that board actually, even if they bid four spades on the other table, because they're vulnerable, we're not. This is a better score for us. And with the King of Clubs offside, there's no escaping another loser for Sally, who's two off in four hearts. Let's see what they do with this one at the other table. Yeah, so we decided not to open our 5-5. Five five. It was a little bit weak, and the spades are not very strong. So opening two spades, even though common with five in the modern game, queen 10, 7 to 5, a bit weak for me. Okay, so Stefano's passed um, with, with favourable vulnerability, which is uh, a good vulnerability for, for bidding a lot. Um, and uh, Chip's opened a club. Now, with most people, I would play two clubs as natural here uh, when a club could be less than four, and that's what I would do. But I've never played a board with Stefano, or have. I played I played two, one and two, but we've never discussed this. And I don't think it's very appropriate for me to try and ask him what we do at this stage. So I'm going to bid three clubs, because I know he'll know that's natural, and I don't want to bid two clubs, and he thinks that's the majors. The other advantage of three clubs is I'm preempting the opponents after partners pass, which I quite like. But overall, I think it's better to bid three clubs than to pass. When it goes a club, three clubs, it looks like we did the wrong thing. We shouldn't have a big space thing, I hope. Yeah, three clubs from Peter. I think that's natural. It must be because two clubs would be Michael's. Uh, I have this long hot suit, but, but uh, I'm not getting involved at this point. I'm just going to stay out of it. Ah, so now it's different. Now, after my partner's made a takeout double, uh, I definitely am going to show my hearts. And um, I think just at the three level, I, I feel like uh, that's plenty. And if my partner has good support for me, he knows what to do. Uh, 
Okay, so Stefano leads the Six of Clubs. My partner has a really good hand, but unfortunately, there isn't a lot of play here for four hearts. I think we're, we're almost certainly going down. Losers in spades and diamonds. Now, uh, do I take this finesse or not? Well, Peter bid three clubs, so he has, uh, you know, he probably has six of them. So that would make Stefano's lead a singleton, and I should definitely not finesse. So I'm going to go up with the ace. Okay, so we're defending four hearts, and Stefano led the six of clubs, so that's either a singleton or a doubleton. And Raj has put up the ace. Um, he's going to put up the ace whether he's got one or two, because he knows I've got the king of clubs at the length, and he'll be worried about a rough. Okay, so Declara wins the ace and cashes the ace of hearts and continues with another heart. So I'm throwing the nine of clubs. I played a low club at trick one, um, to say I like clubs, and now I'm playing the nine is sort of suit preference. So if I had only spades, I could play a higher one. If I had only diamonds, I could play a lower one. So now Declare has paid a diamond to the queen and my king, and I've got nothing more to return than a, than a diamond now. I still don't know who's got the remaining club. So the two of spades was encouraging, and that's Stefano's switch to the three of spades. I'm hoping Declare is going to play the king, but it's quite likely he'll play low. No, he's played the king. So I win the ace of spades, and I play a spade back, and hopefully partner will win the queen. Oh, I suddenly realised that partner, if he had two clubs, would not have switched to a spade now. He'd have left that up to Declara. He would have continued a club. So I definitely should have cashed the king of clubs when I won the ace of spades. Because now partner, if he's got five spades, is going to be end played and um, have to give a rough and discard. And that is indeed the case. So Rajath is able to dispose of his club loser. That means he goes the same two offers at the other table, but the more confident way in which they bid the contract meant that they didn't get doubled, and so the patrons lose only 200 on the hand, compared with 500 at the other table. So that's seven imps to the patrons, and the score now stands at 12-7. Okay, Sally has opened a five-card spade suit, and clearly I have a very nice hand. I like to play myself that I bid two clubs with balanced hands or hands with clubs and that two of a red suit shows the five card suit. But I'm not going to do that here on too small. I mean, my idea here is to show where I live and then support partner spades and make a slam try. So I don't want to start with two clubs on too small. I want to show where my cards are. So it's two diamonds from me. We're playing two over one. And I'm not quite sure what style we're playing, but I'm not going to rebid. Uh, I'm not going to rebid two no trumps with two small in an unbid suit. So I'll just settle for two spades for the moment. As Sally rebids two spades, and now I have a simple three spades, which is forcing. I have a minimum hand. I've no interest in anything, so I'm just going to bid a straight four spades. Sally is signing off in four spades. She clearly doesn't have much, and. I have absolutely no reason to overrule her. I'm passing. Oh, yuck. I don't like my lead there. I nearly led a club as well. Oh, such a pain. So uh, that looks like it's going to make it a little bit easier for Sally. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to do some guessing in hearts and clubs. There aren't any losers in spades and diamonds. Well, there might be a spade loser, but the main problem is going to be hearts and clubs. Well, it was fairly clear to play the jack of hearts at trick one because North isn't going to underlead an ace. Um, so that's clearly the right thing to do. So I need to switch to a club because there are some nasty looking diamonds in the dummy. The question for me is which club to switch to. Do I bang down the ace and play another club or do I switch to a low club? Possibly giving Sally a guess. The danger of doing that is if she hops up with the king, um, she may have some discards for the rest of her clubs on the diamonds. But I feel if if Bridget and I are going to get her down on this contract, um, we need to give her a guess in the clubs. And um, so I switch to a low club. 
Now I have to decide whether to play the king or jack of clubs. Now, from my way of thinking, if North had the queen in both hearts and clubs, then it's restricted choice. They might well have led a, a club to start with. So I'm going to play North for the ace of clubs. But I was wrong. Sally, during the bidding, didn't show any extras. Um, so I suspect she's got five spades and there are three in the dummy. I've obviously got a singleton. And I think my partner has four spades and we're likely to get a spade trick to get this down. So I lead a spade at this point. Well, this is looking a bit tricky now. I mean, I'm going to win the ace of spades and then decide what to do. Should I finesse? North for the 10. It seems like a really big position to take. So um, I'm just going to draw trumps. When South's got a singleton jack, then I'm one down, I'm afraid. I think we got a bit lucky there. It looks like Sally can probably make four spades. Hopefully that's a bit of a swing for us. Well, if there is a swing in their favour, that would put the patrons team in a happy position at the end of the first half. Let's see what happens. All right, so I have a nice 15 point hand. My partner has opened. Uh, I just want to force the game here and I don't have a five card suit. Um, now, you know, Frank and I haven't discussed this, but um, uh, in in the way I do this, I, I'm just going to bid two clubs and hopefully he'll, uh, he won't get excited about clubs. Because obviously I don't have them. Uh-oh, he raised clubs. Uh, well, we need to get this back on track here. Clearly, uh, there isn't a lot of uh, future in the club suit, so I'm going to bid three spades. And uh, I think he'll, he'll, he'll know what to do. I don't think he'd underlead the ace. So I play the jack and hope he led from the queen. Okay, good. Now I need to think. So the auction went a spade, two clubs, three clubs, three spades, four spades. In the modern game of today, three clubs is generally a good hand with four clubs or five. So let's try to figure out what is the Clara's hand here. So the Clara has, since they bid four spades over three spades, we can imagine they have a weak hand. If they had a good hand, then they would have gone slower. So they're probably 5-5 five, five is what I'm thinking. Partner led the six of hearts. We led third and fifth. So that could be from three. That could be from queen 10, six or queen 10, six, four. So how, how are we gonna beat this contract? If the clear is five, five, that would give partner a singleton club. So I could play a sub club club for partner to rough. Or I could play a low club, hoping partner has the stiff queen of clubs. So that would give the clear little. Mm, can a low club call cost? Let's think if a low club can cost. Um, if the clever has ace, 10, 9 to 5 spades, say they have queen 1 heart and singleton jack of diamonds, for example, and king queen of 5 club. If I play a low club, they win the king. Now they have four pitches for the four losing clubs. I never score my ace. Hmm. Wonder why Stefano is taking so long. I think he must have the club queen. If he had the club ace, he should smoothly underlead it. So I'm ready. I'm ready to play the jack. Let's try ace of club club. Oh, he plays the ace. Oh, well, thank goodness he did that because I, I would have gotten that wrong. 
Four, okay, now let's hope to give partner a rough, playing for the hand we were playing for before with the King of Spades. It seems we were very wrong. The clever is not 5-5, five, five, but at least partner didn't have the Queen of Clubs, so at least we didn't give, give much away. So to beat this now, we probably need two trump tricks. So we need partner to have King 10 to 4 spades now. Let's see. Play to the ace, okay. Still, we still have our some hope. Club queen, ouch. We've really done the wrong thing. We've really misanalyzed this one. So, the clearer had a weak no trump with three clubs. This, I did not account for. If we had played a low club, we might... If partner still has a ten of spades, we would have given the clearer, I guess. Actually, in hindsight, I should have probably switched to something passive. If when partner gets in with the king of spades, they can still play club eight club. That was an error. I should have just played a hard trick probably. That was probably a better defense here. Clever would have made it on a guess, but now we've given the clever the guess and he's making it now for sure. Interesting how Nick's decision not to bid two clubs as the balanced game force at the other table, a bid many of us, myself included, would have made, avoided the club raise that caused Stefano to misread the hand here. All the right thinking, but based on a false premise. And taking away that club guess allows Chip to make four spades here for a score of plus 620 and a 12 imp swing to the patrons team, who now lead by 19 imps to 12. We'll take a break here and bring you the second half of this keenly fought contest in the next video. I know only too well from listening to various podcasts how appeals for support become such a routine part of the listening experience that you just don't hear them anymore. So I'm going to try a little emotional manipulation with a picture of this sad bunny and some violin music, out of copyright of course, along with the information about where you can lend your support and gain the many benefits available to our patrons. Unless you're completely unmoved by the sad bunny because you're hewn from rock, please do visit www.patreon.com forward slash NT Bridge. Please, allow me to show you something.